I've enjoyed nuclear ever since I've been in it. I've done a lot of different things in, in the 50 years or so that I've been here. I learned a lot about operating a reactor, what it took to keep it running. George brought to the program a wealth of knowledge in many areas, both in reactor technology and in risk assessment. He's uh, led and had an impact in the uh, safety analysis. Around the world, they asked George to come give them a workshop. So when you talk about reactor licensing, you want to talk with George. He's thinking. He is thinking every moment. The reputation that George has established through his consistent pattern of strong technical work, strong technical leadership, it's been critical to his success and to all of ours. You know, we always saw George as an enormous resource because of his experience working at the high-flux isotope reactor. There were folks there with 20 years of experience and they brought a whole bunch of new folks in to create a new division. George was one of the key ones. The folks looked, looked to him and said, who, who is this city slicker talking about probabilistic risk assessment all the time. George very quickly uh, proved to everyone he was much more than just a whiz kid PhD. He was uh, someone who could maintain his composure and um, in trying circumstances. We were facing a shutdown of the, the major reactor and we had like more than a hundred review committees uh, came in to review what was going on, whether they should keep it running or not and all that. So there was a lot to be learned. <laughs> How to handle yourself in front of a, a relatively not particularly uh, um, favorable crowd. <laughs> Passion is often very high, you know, around what the priorities on, on either side. And, and George is, is so uh, methodical and uh, rational in his discussion of these topics that he helps to bring the two sides together. Uh, and find that middle ground. We were looking at a laboratory that would be without reactors and the neutrons they produce and the science that produces uh, without George's contributions. He didn't just help with the restart, he joined the team and worked as a, as a key manager for 15 years. I got interested in the safety aspects of reactors, worked on through my island investigating committee. I worked on the Fukushima investigating committee, which reported directly to the Secretary of Energy. I think George Impact started from the first safety report published, which is WASH 1400. He was also one of the contributors. And also for the current advanced reactor deployment, he supported the licensing effort. He's like the licensing expert. Well, one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact I was on the committee for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Out of that came the NRC position paper, a policy statement, on, on essentially safety of nuclear power. They, they pretty much adopted my program's position on that. Just about any type of research reactor, he, he knows some about it. I think it was probably in the Jupiter Icy Moons Orbiter program, one of our space reactor activities that, that I was leading, that I had an opportunity to bring George into the program and bring all of that expertise. Currently he's working on fusion reactor safety as well, which is like the forefront of the safety analysis. For the advanced reactor fission or fusion, you need that experience how to deploy. George is one of the few person. The reality is that George's impact comes from the collective uh, efforts across his career that have shaped the direction and focus of an entire industry. Oh, he did. He had an awful lot of firsts. In 1995, he led a futures uh, effort, reconstitute the Heifer design, and then uh, a new cold beam tube with a cold neutron moderator in it, and a guide hall with instruments for the scientists to use, one of the best in the world. The first fire risk assessment was done under George. First safety analysis report for a research reactor was done by George. The first ice cream social at a PSA conference was because of George. George, George was just, he was like daylight. He was like always around somewhere. 
George spent a lot of time doing the training on research reactors for the IAEA inspectors that go around the world and look at various reactors for non-proliferation purposes. He's contributed internationally there in the research reactor field. Oh, everybody loves to work with George. George is one of the ageless person. I always heard him referred to as the gentleman from Oak Ridge, and it couldn't be more true. If George was not involved in your project, you always asked him to peer review your report or article because you knew you were going to get a thorough, comprehensive review. So it was a really tough review, but everyone flocked to him and he was working into the evenings. And I would tease him and say, do I, do I need to bring you dinner? Or should I also bring you a pillow and a blanket? But he would say, okay, well, I needed to talk. People needed to ask me questions in the daytime. So I really started my work when they went home. So if he can help somebody else understand so they can get forward in what they need to do, he was happy to do that. He's very quick to share his, his own experience and expertise. He's very kind in providing uh, guidance and recommendations, especially to early career staff. But there's this steady hand that's helping to guide you through the uh, chaos you know, as, as you try to accomplish big things. Something that happened a lot at ORNL is that whatever you were working on, there was, and you, if you had a question, there was probably someone out there who knew the answer, or they knew who did, and, and that's George. You know, engineers aren't known for being good communicators. Uh, I think George was an exception. Great technically, and he's also a really, really good communicator. One, two, three, four. There was an awful lot of opposition when I graduated from college about nuclear energy and period. You know, people were scared of it. They didn't want it in their backyard, so to speak. These are the stakes. Uh, that's one of the things I, I learned was on Clinch River, I needed to, to get out and talk to people about why I thought that reactor was okay. Before I met George, I didn't know anything about nuclear power, but if you ask him a, a question, a technical question, he doesn't say you wouldn't understand. He starts to explain it in a manner that he thinks you will understand, so he will start with something that he thinks that you can relate to and dig in from there. It's, it's always been striking to me that, that George spans so much of the history of the, um, of the laboratory. He provides a bridge, a personal bridge, back to the legacy of this lab you know, from, from its 80 year history that it's hard to, to find. For first three years, George was my mentor and I uh, learned how a senior person can be that generous with his time. To talk with this like newly hired postdoc and every week we had one hour mentoring time with him. So generally it ended up one and a half hour. <laughs> so generally that was my excuse, like my brain hurts, like it's enough information for me today, but it's such a pleasure to talk with him. I deeply miss our mentoring time together. George has been a great mentor to a lot of people and he followed not only me, but others who came in about the same time. George watched over our careers. Whatever I ask, George has an answer for it. And it's not like a basic answer. It's like he worked on that specific project, so he knows that specific report, or he was the contributor. So he had deep uh, answers that I learned through every question I asked. Mentors come in a lot of flavors. And uh, in my opinion, George is one of the most impactful. People who have that level of expertise and that mentality and that worldview end up being mentors to everyone, whether they're reporting to that person or whether they're working with the person or they're supervising person. My guess is, is that what motivates George is the same thing that motivates me, which is curiosity. Just a, a zeal to understand, right? And then to share. I think his sharp mind is eager to teach, to discuss, and to facilitate the discussions, to seed the ideas. He would come to the meetings and bring practical solutions to the problem. And this was based on his uh, fact that he grew up in a Midwestern farm. So his Baylor 
uh, wire and twine solutions were often as good as his nuclear science and mathematics solutions to problems. The impact of any researcher is grounded in the perception of their integrity and their work and their willingness to not only uh, step forward and question the work of others, but to question their own work. Everyone works on probabilistic safety analysis. They know George. The younger generations are standing on the shoulders of this giant to understand what PSA means, how to apply. George is that giant for the PSA community. He is interested in the science, and you'd come ask him any question, but he is really interested in the people and helping them. Seems to make him happy. Quite a bit of my career was, was supported and enhanced by working with, with George. It is an amazing legacy. I think George's impact is far-reaching. Uh, there are certainly uh, professionals working across the entirety of the nuclear energy field today uh, who have been impacted by George, either directly or indirectly, through his work, uh, through the leadership that he has demonstrated, and through the, the role model that he has provided to so many of us. It looks good <laughs> on your resume, if nothing else. Be there to remind the people who are younger <laughs> than I am that there is a future <laughs> in nuclear power.